they did absolutely deserved presentation and the effort that went into getting them right. And I think we owe a huge debt of gratitude to Fanula Smith and her, I think her extended team because she drafted in quite a lot of people. And um, Christy Keating, I suppose, who we say found them in the National Library. Now, Christy says they've always been there, but Christy did go and ask the question. And I think only for Christy back in December going. So I'm going I to move stood beside it and realize he was here. Uh, fellow members of Co-op Credit Union and ladies and gentlemen, uh, the sinking of the Lusitania in May 1915 was a global tragedy that claimed the lives of so many people. The history and the story of the Lusitania is forever enshrined in the memories of the people of Cove and the wider harbour community in general. Um, so I, know I wrote this out following Henrik so often in speeches, I said I better prepare myself. Uh, this exhibition is a unique collection and reflection of the tragedy and captures the absolute poignancy of the period in exceptional detail. We in Cove Credit Union are pleased to be associated with this exhibition in partnership with the Commemor Two, Commemoration Committee. We've had a series of lectures over the last four weeks. Um, but it's really the 7th of May and the 10th of May when the majority are, are you know, the real important ceremony to take place. Um, just like to say, uh, first I'd like to say thank you to the Commemoration Committee for sponsoring this exhibition. And there's always a connection when you scratch beneath the surface, but the credit union movement had been started years ago by the International Labour Organisation, which is part of the UN, and my father actually worked with them for years, and he was the one who actually told me that they started the credit union, so it's great. Um, I'm going to talk just very briefly about some of the photographs from the photographer's point of view. If you're passionate about photography, you can become very critical about... Um, photographs and especially snapshots as such um, and say god they could have done better or whatever and I think we're like Martians, you know, passionate photographers are like Martians and the earthlings never seem to get it right. <coughs> Some of these pictures when you get a chance do come back and have a look at them in detail because the more you look at them the more you see how good the photographer was from the pool collection. Um, he took pictures or she because we, we don't know completely who did take the photographs but they situated themselves like a true photographer of the olden days where it was all film. Um, you had to get the picture right. You didn't know what your results were going to be. So you did have to have a good knowledge of photography. Um, so for an example, this picture here, just up here, which is at the back of the Cunard office, has never been seen, this particular one, because it's been in the glass plate for the last hundred years. But this person took his time by looking to see where he was going to take the photograph from. And basically he's told three or four stories just in that one picture when you get a chance to have a look at it. You will see that there are survivors and that there are um, uh, loved ones, relatives in the background looking into coffins to see if it might be their loved one. You've got the lone survivor um, or lone person over on the left who obviously looks like she's lost somebody and even just by the body language. Uh, you've got the soldiers sorting out stuff, and then you've got the man doing the director of operations up there. The way your man, the photographer poised himself there, I think, was ingenious. He did a really good job, and you see it in a lot of the other photographs. The other one is, uh, it's over on the far well, side. You know, a lot uh, of the people right. would have been in a state of shock um, straight after, and that's why they're obviously smiling, there's relief and everything. But then, when you turn and you start doing the funeral, and you start looking at them as they're going along in the cortege, obviously everything was starting to sink in. The sadness started to take over even more. I think what this photographer has done, this collection has done, has really um, told the really, really fast this one we quite, I think, short and simple. And Tom will stand in front of the photograph of his grandfather and, and I say, just say, say, say a few words, Sam. Um, but just before that, as I said, this, this whole lot of people are free to go through that. And we also have a, a book of remembrance and what we want to happen over the next number of weeks. And we're going to have going to be one in the Commodore Hotel, the Serious Art Centre and the Heritage Centre. And we want people who are coming to call anyone with a connection to Lucy Tenney just to sign the book. And if they have any special thoughts of their own, some of them will be survivors or relatives of survivors. Thank you very much for <coughs> giving this speech to Arnold. Of uh, the very sad uh, Tom Lowell, I suppose. And our grandfather was the captain of the flying fish. 
And from what we heard <coughs> about the flying fish, it was all steamboats then. It was all coal and to get them going. So they, were led, they, <coughs> they dropped the coaling of the ship for the moment as they no more. So when he got the news, he... Who sailed from our shore have gone to eternity. 